like I said, I'm a lived experience advisor at uh, in the, within the mental health priority area at Welcome. And one of the very first projects that I was privileged to work on is the active ingredients. As I understood them, the active ingredients are aspects of interventions that really make a difference in preventing, treating, and maybe stopping altogether anxiety and depression in young people. I was, I was very privileged to work on this and I was so excited to learn that Welcome had commissioned 30 global teams of researchers to review the evidence behind these active ingredients and to see which ones were the most likely to help. What was even more exciting was that of these active ingredients, none of them was like each other. Some were similar, but they were not the same. They ranged, they were very vast, vast in range, uh, coming from, you know, some which were like biological, like gut microbiome, to others like uh, increasing financial resources, taking walks, using antidepressants, and even having increased self-compassion. We wanted to find, we wanted to know more about this and we want to work with the mental health science community in general to refine this and review them more in order that we can start setting up strong foundations for the next generation of mental health treatments and approaches. I've heard Miranda talk about this, Miranda Wolpert, the head of the mental health priority area, and I think I want to take a stab at sort of visualizing it with you. So imagine in your kitchen, your store, your cupboard, wherever you store your food. Think about the ingredients there and what you contain. Some of them are essential and they contain nutrients for a healthy life. Some of them contain particular flavors and textures that you, you're really fond of. You know, some people like curry. I personally like hot food. And some can be cooked by themselves. For example, as you can see, eggs, they can be cooked and make, you know, you can make yourself an omelet, but you can also add them to something to make them extremely delicious. When you combine them with other ingredients, you can, you, you, you can make something tasty. Different quantities and methods can even turn the same ingredients into a completely different dish. These points are almost, you know, you, you, can, you can't, they go without saying, because that's how we understand food. That's, that's what lies behind what we call food and nutrition. In the same way that we talk about food, we thought this would be a great way to talk about mental health. Here are some of the, the active ingredients that we are looking at right now in our kitchen, in our mental health cupboard. Uh, we have increased sense of muttering, we have reduced repetitive negative thinking. We have positive activities, bodily movement, uh, reduced loneliness, and you know green spaces. Some of these may be more important than others. Some of these may be added to others. Um, like, just like we talked about food is the same way we can talk about these active ingredients. Uh, some of these ingredients are you know classic ways that we used to thinking of treating mental unless, you know, like using antidepressants or going to therapy. And some of these ingredients help us change the way we think. And others are activities or practices that we can take up. Some of them need to be activated on a societal level by government. So governments have to think of ways in which they can increase, you know, green spaces or increase places where people can, you know, take walks outside. It can even be simple as just introducing a pathway uh, on, on, on a public road. Um, and others are the are ones that we can all play a part in serving. So reducing loneliness, not only for ourselves, but for our, our peers and our friends. Most people have favorite foods, um, and that means that ingredients that for whatever reason ignite their taste buds. Some people do not like peanut butter, but I do. That's my favorite food. Uh, in the same way, some in ingredients from the mental health store cupboard can be chosen based on what works for an individual. And they can be used in different ways. Some may become the basis of our diet, while others are best used selectively or you know, can be used as seasoning.
we all have our own dietary requirements and not all of these ingredients are suitable for everyone. What works for one can definitely, may definitely not work for the other. And some can be dangerous if they're used too much. Some of the ingredients we know are well, are well known and others are not well known and they're very, and they're less well researched. What we know uh, is really low. We're still reaching for old fashioned ingredients rather than setting out to find new ones. Just like in cooking, uh, different recipes can come from different uh, different range of experts. Uh, some can be, a lot of people did a lot of work a long time ago to better understand mental health. Some can be passed from family members who it worked for a long time ago and then they use that. And some can be shared between friends. They may want to share what worked for them to see if it could work for you too. Much like our food tastes, the active ingredients that work best may change depending on our situation, when, where and why we're, we, we're using them. We would like to invite you to find out more about uh, the active ingredients at welcome.org, but also follow the conversation on hashtag ActiveIngredientsMH on social media, but more on Twitter. Thank you.